California mandates vaccines for all public school children as early as 2022. So that gives California parents a whole year to decide whether to finally abandon the public schools or to sacrifice their children on the altar of Gavin Newsom. We'll call him Moloch, his cult. I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. As you know, we're the only program out there that keeps you educated this way on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today's show is sponsored by Mike Lindell and our friends at MyPillow. You can save up to 66% at MyPillow on everything when you, you just use the access code Dr. Duke. D-R-D-U-K-E. Again, 66%. Can't beat that. Today, we are starting out in California, where it's California. California, what are, so many you to, you, euphemisms, the land of fruits and nuts and uh, California, where tin pot dictator Gavin Newsom just, be, he, he's fresh off his re-election, his, de- his defeat over the recall, and he now figure, figures that he's got a bigger mandate than ever before to mandate your little kids now. He's coming after them. They're going to get the jab or they're not going to school in the fall. Stunning when you stop and think about it. Yes, Governor Gavin Greesom just announced that come July 2022 is the deadline that you have to have your child, if they're in grades seven and up, they must be vaccinated in order to attend a public school. And the thing is, this isn't, we knew this was coming kind of a thing because one, it's California. And two, a lot of the big schools like LA and all that have already basically put those uh, vaccine mandates in place. So this is just a great opportunity after the recall for him to be like, yeah, let's just make the whole state have to have yeah, these th- vaccines. This is Why you, not? This Why is, not? We can do what, it. This is what the recall did, right? You, so, you, all, you, all you did is re- completely reinvigorate him to be an even larger douche than he's ever been before. And what the, what's happening is it's not just the public. It's also the private schools. So mom and dad, California, yeah. Get them out now. So are they really private schools if he can <laughs> no, order this? No, no, they aren't. And it, of course, it's going to be a phase-in process. We're going to start with the 7th through 12th grade, and then we're going to go to the kindergarten through 6th grade because the FDA then hopefully, you know, they're going to have it all ready for them to do because they're all working in conjunction together. And we already know that some of the vaccines are, you know, approved for 16 and older. Then it's available for 12 to 15, but it's under the emergency use authorization. You know, it's just a matter of time here. And Maybe for Christmas we'll have it be able to be approved for everybody. What's the emergency that requires we don't know. seven-year-olds? We what's don't know. Seventh, seventh graders. But, what's, 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 where's the statistics that show that there's a, a dangerous disease that's harming seventh graders. We don't graders. know. And, no, we don't. And Newsom already did say that more than 63% of Californians who Californians who are aged 12 to 17 have at least one dose of the vaccine. Uh, he said the widespread inoculation will be critical to keeping classrooms open. He says, we want to end this pandemic. No, we are don't. all exhausted by it. No, you don't. He you doesn't wanna... because <laughs> no. you, can't, you can't push panic porn if you don't have that's the panic right. porn to push. Here's a a tweet that broke on Friday from his Gavinus. California will require our kids to get the COVID-19 vaccine to come to school. This will go into effect following full FDA approval. Our schools already require vaccines for measles, mumps, and more. Why? Because vaccines work. This is about keeping our kids safe and healthy. I got news for you, Gav. They're safe and healthy without the shot. Uh, now, they may become safer and healthier, or they may not. You have no idea what's going to happen, but that's okay. This is the People's Republic of China. The fact is, is that they had a chance to remove you from office and overwhelmingly chose not to. So let's let the children of California lead. No choice, no hope, no option. Let them get all jabbed. If the rest of the country's smart, and of course places like New York and all the liberal states aren't, stand back and watch what happens to those children in three, five, ten years, because there's no guarantee. While the red states can sort of chuckle, 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 and their kids who aren't going to get the jab aren't going to have any problem navig- navigating seventh and eighth and ninth grade without it, it's not going to change a single thing. And we know that California already requires that all K-12 students, the faculty, the staff, everyone must wear the mask at school. So my question to you is, what more will you allow your children to have to do to have them put their butts in the seats 
at those schools yeah. to learn what? Those are the questions you need to ask yourself, mom and dad. How often will you have Why? to get these booster? How? how often are you going to have to do booster shots? How often are you going to have to bring them back? Three, four, at one point, Fauci said, you may need a, 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 a booster every six months for the rest of your life, right? Let's, when are we going to stop with this nonsense? It's California, though. And so we're, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, uh, New York here in a moment, which to the surprise of nobody is going to do exactly the same thing. So what, uh, what we're really dealing with here is a crisis of individual liberty, right? We're, that's the crisis we're facing here. Uh, to avail yourself of the crappy California public schools, you now have to make your child completely available to the kind of drug experimentation that passes for vaccination with this COVID over the last year and a half. Uh, this is where you find yourself now. So by all means, keep sending your kids to public school. If you expose them to this, what won't you expose? Maybe, maybe this is where we are in California. Maybe this is why California as a state is so eager to get to give seven and eight year olds, nine and 10 year olds hormones that will completely transform their own genetic makeup. Maybe that not that, excuse me, that won't that won't change their genetic makeup, they will remain boys or girls, but will inhibit the body's natural reaction to something like puberty. So this, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that California, who would, if they could get away with it, they would give uh, hormone blocking pills, little Fred Flintstone vitamins, right? To try to get kids to eat it with their Cheerios every morning. That's where California is. But don't let this America become the model for America. Before we move on, I have my daily reminder that the best way to access our content is to download the Freedom Project Media app. Simply search Freedom Project in your app store and please make sure you allow for notifications. Also, if you like listening to the audio podcast, we are available on Apple, Google, SoundCloud, and everywhere else. We told you in the last segment we were going to talk about New York City, and now's the time. New York City. They want their teachers, and not just want, they mandate that their teachers get the jab. And it was a late-breaking story, but after trying to file an emergency injunction to have it stopped, the Supreme Court, and more specifically, Sonia Sotomayor, said, nope, teachers, you must get the jab. And so that's where we're at. Was this the wise Latina? This is Sonia Sotomayor. The wise Latina said, I'll just say it's Sonia hey, American Sotomayor. public school teachers, your SOL, because she has spoken. Yes. So this last week, Friday, had been the deadline in New York City for teachers and I guess all employees to get the jab. Oh, sorry, to be vaccinated. I'll stop saying get the jab. To be vaccinated. If you did not get vaccinated, you are not to show up to work on Monday because you don't have a job left. Now, originally they had it, the mandate was for a week prior, but then they're like, oh, not everyone has it yet. So we're going to just extend it. It's kind of like what they do with your homework. There's no real deadlines, except now. And no they accountability. Did. No accountability. But then they cut it off. So here's what happened when the deadline, the original Friday deadline was supposed to hit. You have Mayor Bill de Blasio who likes to think that he is all on top of the world and everyone will bow to his whims. And so he's out there being all proud of how many teachers at the time had gotten vaccinated. Let's take a look. 90% of our Department of Education employees are vaccinated, at least one dose. A 93% of our teachers, 98% of our principals. The bottom line is this mandate has worked and the goal was protect, to protect kids, including our youngest kids who can't be vaccinated yet. That has many bracing for staffing shortages at schools come Monday, but the mayor isn't worried. We have thousands and thousands of high quality substitute teachers, especially young folks who come out of schools of education. They're looking to get into our school system permanently. They're vaccinated. They're ready. I do not believe that this is just about a vaccine. I do not believe that this is just about our health. This is about medical freedom. This is about totalitarianism. The person you just heard right there at the end, Rachel Maniscalco, Skalko is one of four teachers who actually had 
sued or petitioned, I, I should say, petitioned the court claiming that the mandate violated their due process and equal protection rights. And according to their petition that, again, they filed and now the Supreme Court said no, they said that if the mandate was permitted to take effect, the August 23 order will force thousands of unvaccinated public school employees to lose their jobs while other municipal employees, including those who have significant contact with children, are allowed to opt out of the vaccine mandate through weekly COVID-19 testing. As the number of unvaccinated is small compared to that of the vaccinated, there's no basis to mandate vaccines in lieu of weekly testing. Here's the deal. Unlike all the rest of them, the teachers were not allowed to say, okay, I'm not getting the vaccine, test me weekly. De Blasio did not let that happen. So it's either you get vaccinated or you're out of the job. And that's where the real kicker is. You're not even given the opportunity to say, okay, fine, I'll take this stupid weekly test just to prove that I don't have COVID instead of getting the jab. But that's not what, that is not what is happening in New York City. No, and that's the problem, right? I mean, you've got a situation where there's de Blasio, by the way, East Coast commie. We saw Gavin Newsom, West Coast commie, right? Slim, shades, right? Casual, Gav. And then we see what East Coast commie looks like, and you have de Blasio. Uh, and it, 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 an insult to everyone of Italian heritage, including me in this country. Nevertheless, uh, the problem is, is there he is bragging, bragging, bragging. 98% of our principals, 93% of our school administration said, okay, fine, if you've got that kind, of, and you said it worked, it worked. Okay, if it worked, why go after the 2% of principals who have it? Why go after the 7% of staff who have it? Why is it necessary? You have already done it. Uh, that's way higher than most other places. You, you're seeing no problem with these people other than your quest to be able to completely control the lives of other people, to force people to bend to your awesome commie will. That's, there's no other excuse for this. And the fact that, of course, ironically, uh, it was it was Sotomayor, as the the Supreme Court justice, who heard the immediate relief plea. Uh, although, hey, I'd rather have because you know John Roberts would have said exactly the same thing. Absolutely. So let let the wise Latina take the hit anyway. So what's interesting is that according to the New York Times, basically De Blasio kind of, I think he he made a slip, but I think he spoke the truth. You had Newsom saying in a tweet how you know vaccines work and they're they to stay healthy and all that. According to the New York Times, de Blasio said that mandates work, they make us mm -hmm. safer. How do mandates of what? How do mandates work and make us safer? Shouldn't it say vaccines you work? You would think so. But no, not according to de Blasio. He uh, had said that. And he also said, I would urge every mayor in America, do it now. Get those vaccine mandates in place ahead of the cold weather. When things are going to get tougher, do it now or you will regret it later. Because we know Bill de Blasio is the king of all the mayors and he speaks for all the mayors of the whole nation because he wants to be a dictator. But according to the updated store or st stats from Monday's jab session, you had said Bill de Blasio on Friday, he said they were at uh, 90 percent of public school employees with 93 percent of teachers, 98 percent of principals all getting the jab. Well, over them by Monday, they had said that 95 percent of employees, so a 5 percent jump there, had at least one dose of the vaccine and 96 percent of the teachers and 99 percent of the principals. So again, if you have that high a percentage, why can't you allow the remaining 4% of teachers and 1% of principals to do the weekly test for COVID. But no, because you're going to lose your job if you don't get the jab. Because that would give them choice, ah, number one. Yes, number yes. two, which the left says they're all about, by the way, about especially when it comes to your body. Choice is something the left pretends that matters. Well, I guess that's only when you're slaughtering babies. And let's be clear, no one slaughters more babies than New York every year, particularly black ones. But there's the, so there's the choice question, and then there's the other question about this, right? It, 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 that means that 1% or 3% or 4% of New York citizens could actually do what, to stand against what the governor wants. Ah. That's the problem, right? You, you would have a choice then, which would limit the ultimate power of government, and you would actually be standing athwart of what Governor Kami wants. And we just can't have that in America. It's another day with another racist hoax. And that led to a subsequent walk out of school. We had a mass student protest of about a thousand students, give or take probably 10. Uh, and this happened at Parkway Central High School in the St. Louis suburbs. And where one day 
after a racist act happened involving graffiti in the bathrooms, there's the graffiti in the bathrooms, people read it, people saw it, and so then they scheduled to have this big mass protest. Uh, this happened at Parkway Central High School where someone had written a racial slur uh, for African Americans on the walls, as well as a statement wishing the death of black people. And they also had, even though we don't know what was written on the walls, at Parkway North bathrooms as well. So this actually happened at two schools, but only at Parkway Central High School did they have this protest. Let's, before we get to the story, let's just listen to what the students had to say about the protest. I did not feel safe being in some of those classes, seeing those words written on those walls, seeing those people say those words. Imagine how I feel. I'm scared for my life because I don't know what I'm going to face walking into this school. We up here for like the third time and like besides the amount of people here, it looks exactly the same. And I can I can look a week from here. We're going to be back in school. We're going to be listening to you on the intercom in the morning. And it's going to be the same thing that it has been. And I know, I know I'm not the only one because there's all these people out here, but it's getting tired. Because I'm not going to come up to this building and have to be in fear of what, for what? Because of my skin tone? I come here to learn! To learn! You know, now, I, I agree with her on that. She, she should be learning. But that wouldn't help in any way. Now, when you look at the images, Dr. Duke, and you, you see the, the fieriness from the students, you think something really bad has happened. So quickly after the actual writing was put on the wall and everyone saw it, then a letter was issued by Parkway Superintendent Keith Marty, and he had to tell the parents that it was a black student who actually was behind the vandalism, but he is proud of the student protests. He said the student responsible is not white. This does not diminish the hurt it caused or the negative impact it has had on our entire community. We remain hurt by the actions of the student as it does not represent the values of our community. He said the student is facing severe disciplinary consequences and referral to law enforcement for investigation. The uh, Parkway will continue to hold students responsible for any behavior that threatens or degrades others in our school community. And as Marty continued, in these moments, many students shared personal experiences of racism throughout their lives at school. I want to tell the thousands of students who participated, and then we're, again, we're talking about that protest, on behalf of themselves and their fellow classmates, I am proud of you for supporting one another, and we heard you loud and clear. Now, between Marty and then the principal, uh, as you kind of got a glimpse there in, in part of the clip, they were screamed at by these students using their megaphones. So when they say, I'm proud of you for showing, you know, your emotion and all that, I guess they just mean it yeah. through vocal. Yeah. Very. I'm really proud engaged. of you that you jumped uh, to conclusions, that you actually behaved like children, uh, because you know where these things come from. But let's not quit pretending that we don't know this. We are back with Instant Classics to talk about Thomas Cole. Cole was a really interesting, I think, innovative painting. 1801, he was born. 1848, he died. Uh, this series of five paintings called The Course of Empire, what happens as civilization moves through various phases into and out of empire, bad things happen. This is The Course of Empire. It was painted between 1833, these five paintings, and 1836. This whole series is notable. And take a look at the image, Mike. Uh, this is the second of the five. It is notable in part for reflecting popular American sentiments of the time. When many people saw pastoralism, a return to the land, getting away from the cities, out of the suburbs, right, to pull back, to get, so to speak, to get off the grid, whatever that meant back in 1836. It is notably a reflection of the romanticization of the pastoral. So even 180 years ago, we had these same feelings. Uh, and uh, uh, in the years of this, this movement, it is notable in part for reflecting popular American sentiments when many saw pastoralism as the ideal phase of human civilization, living at one with the land, fearing that empire would lead to gluttony, inevitable decay, endless wars. 
The theme of cycles here is one that Cole returned to frequently, such as in his other paintings, the Voyage of Life series, or the, cor the Course of Empire, the one we're looking at, it comprises the following works. We saw yesterday the Course of Empire, the Savage State, now the Arcadian or Pastoral State, when the pastoral life of the Native American has been fully integrated with a government by the people, a small limited government, inward looking and not outward looking, not interested in conquest and movement, but in terms of serving the best of the, 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 the citizens that they do have as best as they can. This particular version is the, uh, we called it the Arcadian state or the pastoral state. In the second painting, the, the sky is cleared and we are in the fresh morning of a day in spring or summer. The viewpoint has shifted further down the river as the crag with the boulder is now on the left-hand side of the painting. You can see the movement in this valley. A forked peak can be seen in the distance beyond it. Much of the wilderness has given way to cultiva cultivated land and agriculture. Culture. The overgrown jungle mindset of the native has given away to husbandry and effective farming agriculture with plowed fields and lawns. Various activities go on in the background, plowing, boat building, herding sheep, dancing in the foreground. An old man sketches what may be a geometrical problem on a, with a stick on the bluff on the near side of the river. A megalithic temple has been built. Religion blends into the landscape here. The images reflect an idealized pre-urban archaic Greece. The work shows humanity at peace with the land and with each other. The environment has been altered, but not so much that its inhabitants are in danger, yet the construction of the warship and the concerned mother watching as her child sketches a soldier, those things hearken to the dangers ahead. All right, those are the stories for today. If you have a question for us, please feel free to drop it into the mailbag by emailing askduke at fpeusa.org. And if you enjoy our content, please support our show by joining the Patriot Club. Your tax-deductible donation keeps us going every single day. Simply visit patriotclub.us to get signed up. That's patriotclub.us. And as a special thank you, we will ship you a brand new American Patriot Tumblr with Mr. George Washington etched right on it. And that wraps up this show. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, education, stay 